أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فأعرض عن من تولى عن ذكرنا ولم يرد إلا الحياة الدنيا ذلك مبلغهم من العلم إن ربك هو أعلم بمن ضل عن سبيله وهو أعلم بمن اهتدى ولله ما في السماوات وما في الأرض ليجزي الذين أساءوا بما عملوا ويجزي الذين أحسنوا بالحسنى We continue insha'Allah Surah Al-Najm and we stopped at ayah number 29 and the passage, the past passage had to do with Allah Ta'ala speaking logically to the people of shirk of their ways and speaking logically to them of why their ways are fallacies logically false wrong and explaining that and talking about the matter of the hereafter it being in the hands of Allah Ta'ala and that nothing can be an intermediary your rocks that you worship your socially powerful people that you have no one has any power on the day of resurrection except whom Allah wishes and is pleased to hear what they have to say. Everyone else will remain silent. Not even the angels can speak or intercede, become intermediaries without His order and will and permission. And the last ayah, Allah Ta'ala said, وَمَا لَهُمْ بِهِ مِنْ عِلْمٍ they have no sure knowledge of what they say. The disbelievers have no sure knowledge of what they say. They follow nothing but mere conjecture, dhan, their thoughts. And conjecture avails nothing at all against the truth. What is dhan? What is your superstitions, your thoughts? What is their value in front of the truth? When Allah Ta'ala establishes the objective truth, then a person's thoughts carries nothing. And last week we went a little bit more detail regarding as a Muslim and from an Islamic perspective, where does this fall? Then Allah Ta'ala says, فَأَعْرِضْ عَمَّنْ تَوَلَّى The passage from here on is more direct to the Messenger of Allah in which Allah Ta'ala says, So turn aside, O Prophet of Allah, from whomever turns away from the Qur'an on dhikrina so turn aside arada or arada arada or arad it means the width of something the arad it is the width of something so arada it means to taqdeem to put something forward in a way that you show its entirety. So for example, if I show you this book, if I go like this, I'm not showing you the entirety. I'm showing you some of it. But if I go like this, I'm showing you it fully. So that's arada. Arada is to put something forward in front of uh, a people or whatever in a manner in which you're showing it fully. Now arada on the other hand, this means to do the complete opposite, which is to ignore fully. So when a person ignores and completely turns away, this is arada. And in the Arabic language, sometimes you have certain words and then the opposite word will come from the exact same letters. For example, qasata or qist means to be just and aqsata means to be unjust. So because of the uh, morphology, the scale, the word completely changes, the meaning completely changes. So, a'rada doesn't mean to come forward or to put forward, rather it means to ignore and to ignore completely. So the Messenger of Allah we know that the guidance that he was given was that he would go behind each and every single person and he would give them the guidance, he would give them da'wah, right? And Allah Ta'ala is telling him that when now the people will turn away from you or they will 
they will wrong you or say something against you and they turn away from the guidance that you give to them the Quran you recite to them on dhikrina right the reminder that you give to them then you're not responsible then whatever they do or whatever they say you can ignore it so ignore the ignore the one who turns away tawalla an dhikrina the one who turns away from our reminder and our remembrance walam yurid illa al hayat ad dunya and who desires nothing but the life of this world so allah ta'ala speaks about two actions which makes a person deprived of quran and deen two actions which make a person deprived of tawfiq tawfiq that allah ta'ala enable that person to be on the right path of guidance two things number one that they turn away from the reminder they turn away from the reminder they turn away from the message they turn away from the da'wah so the, the, the person turns away and this is first by their heart that they don't want to listen. As the, the mushikun, some of them, they would remain in their place but they would put cotton in their ears even right, to show that they don't want to hear the message of our Prophet So they turned away. They turned away from the reminder, our reminder. Then, walam yurid illa hayat dunya And part of that is that they don't want anything but dunya. They don't want anything but the life of dunya. Now the word dunya can be understood a bit. So dunya comes from adna. So you have akbar, kubra, asghar, sughra, and then adna dunya. So the, the, from dunu, it's from the same root letters. And adna can mean two things. Adna can either mean the lowest right? or it can also mean the closest. So, so the Adna, this is the lowest life. This is one point being. When Allah Ta'ala tells us about dunya, it's in its name that it's the lowest life. It is not the epitome of life. The epitome of life and existence is in the hereafter. The epitome of life is in the hereafter. This, this world, this realm is called dunya because it's low class. It's low. The other understanding of it, dunya is that it's close. Everything is near. The shahawat, the desires of this dunya, the temporary uh, gratifications of this dunya, they're near. For the hereafter, you have to wait. You have to be patient. For dunya, you can have immediate gratification. And this is the world of shahawat, world of desires. So Allah Ta'ala said, وَلَمْ يُرِدْ إِلَّا الْحَيَاةِ dunya." That this person, all he wants is the life of, the, of this nearby life. The immediate and temporary gratifications. So Allah Ta'ala is explaining to us the nature of this life in its word. That this is something just immediate because you cannot wait and you cannot be patient. Anything you, you to wait for or to be patient for, it's a lot more difficult. That's the, that's the rule with anything. And so the, the people of dunya, they seek the dunya and they seek its immediate forms of you know, gratification. Allah Ta'ala says, ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعَلْمِ That that is the extent of their knowledge. The extent of what they know is, is this, to turn away from the reminder and to want nothing but dunya, life of the dunya. Now the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu he would, he would uh, give the da'wah to everyone. And this is something important to take from this ayah. It's not that the Messenger of Allah is being told to ignore the people. Rather, the Messenger of Allah went in the face of every person 
and he gave them da'wah and he spoke to them time after time, several times, right? time after time. Right? But Allah Ta'ala says that they chose to, they chose to turn away. If you pay attention to the word tawalla, tawalla came, comes from the same root of waw lam ya, waliya. The same word wali, which means friend, comes from it as well. So something that's really close. There's another word from it that is extracted, which basically it means when the, the, the seat is put on the camel, there is something beneath the seat which holds the, the seat to this, the hair of the camel, or the, the skin of the back of the camel. So when the Arabs would have this seat on the camel, they would sometimes not remove it, which would cause what's below it to stick to the skin of the camel. And so then they would just leave it there, they wouldn't remove it. They wouldn't remove it because they didn't want to harm the camel, they didn't want to anger the camel. So tawalla is that form of when a person turns away, when they're, they're, they're next to it, exactly. They're right near the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu They're right near him. The way the seat is attached to the camel, they're near him, but they choose to rip it off and move away. So Allah Ta'ala is describing in the words as well, how they turned away from the reminder of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu His compassionate reminder. That is the extent of their knowledge. That's what they know. People who, who are not uh, blessed with the uh, blessings of, uh, of guidance, they're not able to attach much meaning to this life and then the extent of knowledge becomes very less. A person's knowledge without Iman is very less. And this is something we need to understand. That Iman gives us knowledge that nothing else can give us knowledge. Nothing else can give us knowledge like Iman. Inna Rabbaka huwa a'lamu biman dalla an sabilihi wa huwa a'lamu biman ihtada. Indeed, it is your Lord alone who knows best all those who are, have strayed from his straight path, and he alone knows best all those who are guided aright. Allah Ta'ala is, no, is more knowing of who is rightfully guided or who is, has gone astray. So they may claim according to their extent of knowledge that they are on the straight path. But Allah Ta'ala knows best who is on the straight path. The extent of the knowledge of the people without Iman is very less. Allah Ta'ala said, ذَلِكَ مَبْلَغُهُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ That is the extent of their knowledge. They don't know anything but to suffice their desires, suffice their needs. Suffice their needs, that's all they know what to do. That's the extent of their, of their knowledge. Now, the thing about knowledge is that it allows people to gain meaning. A language, if you don't learn it, then it's just noise. If you sp see people speaking in Portuguese or speaking in Italian and you hear them talking and you don't know those languages, it's just noise. But, in reality, they're speaking a language, they're communicating. But the extent of the listener's knowledge is that they don't know it. So for them it's just noise. Right? So if he learns that language, if the person learns that language, then they gain meaning. They gain knowledge. Right? That knowledge gives them meaning. That's the same in reality of the insan in this world. Everything around him and her is, doesn't make sense. To make sense of this world, you need knowledge. And then there's two forms of knowledge. There's knowledge of the unseen and there's knowledge of the seen. Knowledge of the seen is very easy. Or not necessarily maybe very easy, but gaining it is, it's more closer. It's, in this, it's placed in this dunya. So knowledge of this world, knowledge of this world, which is limited to this world, that's one form of knowledge. Then the second, the, the, the more primary form and more important form of knowledge 
is the knowledge of the unseen. That knowledge gives us a type of meaning which you don't need only what you see, rather even the world of the unseen now it becomes meaningful for you. For people who don't believe, the world of the unseen, the world of the angels, the world of hisab, the world of uh, morality, these things are of no value, of no meaning to them. Because they don't know it, they don't have knowledge of it. Because the extent of people of dunya's knowledge is dunya. So Allah Ta'ala is basically saying over here that in order for you to in order for you to have more than this this very basic level of knowledge, you need to, number one, not turn away from the reminder, and you need to have something more to live for than dunya. If you're not living for something more than dunya, then your, your, your extent of meaning and worth of this, of, of, of life, will be very, very little. And then Allah Ta'ala points to guidance. Why? Because guidance is what will allow a person to have meaning in their life. Guidance is what will make a person different from other people. And then Allah Ta'ala knows best who is rightly guided. In the next ayah Allah Ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And for Allah alone belongs all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth. Now everything belongs to Allah. This is to establish His authority that He is the owner, He will judge, He will decide, He will differentiate from the right, between the righteous and the wicked. So, وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيَجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى He shall recompense those who do evil for all what they, that they have done and he shall recompense those who do good with great goodness. So Allah Ta'ala is saying now that everything belongs to me and you shall see the fruits of your actions. Those who do good will see the goodness of their actions and those who see evil or those who do evil will see the uh, evil of their actions. They will see the, uh, the, 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 the punishment of their actions. And so this is, this is referring, of course, to hereafter. And this is something very important to establish. Why? Because dunya is not the place for hisab. Dunya is the place for bala. Akhirah is the place for hisab. A lot of times, even for example, because of the current situations, it becomes very difficult for a person to understand if Allah is just, why is He allowing for this to happen? Why is He allowing for what is happening in Palestine to happen if He is just? And what it, it's important to understand that Allah Ta'ala did not create dunya to establish justice because justice is to come. It's mainly in the hereafter. Allah Ta'ala does establish justice from time to time on the hands of prophets and the hands of the people of the righteous. Allah does establish justice. And this is also important to understand. Adil and justice will not come from disbelievers. Adil and justice will come from believers, will come from mu'mineen, and will come from righteous people. Allah Ta'ala does establish justice from time to time. But not necessarily. Why? Because this is Darul Bala. This is the abode of test. And in test, there is the follow. There is a spectrum. Or there is, yani, uh, there isn't necessarily a balance. So there is not always a balance. But the hereafter, Allah Ta'ala will establish justice. So much so, that the Messenger of Allah said, that even if a ram hit another ram, those rams will be resurrected. And then the ram which was harmed, Allah Ta'ala will tell that ram, now take your revenge, take your retribution. So Allah Ta'ala will establish justice even between the animals. An animal which has done wrong will be resurrected uh, to be, to take its punishment. Uh, and the animal which was wronged, 
which was done wrong to will take its revenge. So Allah Ta'ala will reward those who do good with good and Allah Ta'ala will punish those who of evil with their actions in the hereafter. So this is this is this is Allah Ta'ala saying Maliki Yawmuddin that He is the owner of the day of Hisab. And we'll we'll stop here and continue inshaAllah from this uh, in the next week inshaAllah. May Allah Ta'ala grant us understanding of this and the ability to bring it in our lives and may he forgive us for our shortcomings in trying to and attempting to understand his perfect word wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin sadaqallahu alazim subhanallahi wa bihamdihi subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa inshallah